South Africa's tourism industry has been one of the hardest hit sectors since the onset of the global COVID-19 pandemic. Despite the easing of travel restrictions, recovery has been quite slow and international visitors have all but dried up. Tourism Minister Mamaluku Kubayangubani is currently in talks with foreign government, we're told, that have placed restrictions on travel to South Africa in order to assure them that the country's COVID-19 vaccine rollout is on track. The minister, as you've seen now, joins us now via our video link for more on this. Minister, thanks very much for your time. Great to have you on the AM report this morning. Perhaps let's start with your reflections on what you think it'll actually take to drive up demand again, so to speak, within the sector, so that we get back to those pre-COVID-19 levels. Good morning, Ayanda, and good morning to your viewers. Yeah, indeed, it's going to be a, a, a difficult period. Um, what we, we are currently doing, uh, it's engaging international partners, both in government and private sector, because the issue is about repositioning brand South Africa again as a destination of choice. Uh, you'd understand that when we entered into lockdown last year, we placed restrictions on a number of countries. Others either retaliated uh, because they, there was quite a lot of uh, misunderstanding about how to manage the pandemic. Others obviously would have reacted to the variant in December, which also was caused by miscommunication as well by the UK Minister of Health. It did a lot of damage in terms of brand. Um, South Africa. And what we are doing is to be able to converse. You'd understand in the diplomatic space, when a travel restriction is placed, normally they would either put it for three months, for six months, and then they normally don't just remove it. It expires after the time it has been put. So what we are trying to do from our side is to be able to engage with international partners, both in terms of trade, um, tourism trade, who brings tourists into the country, but also the diplomatic corps who are assisting us in terms of sending the message to their governments in how we are managing the pandemic, both those who are here and those who are not here, so that when we come to summer, especially for us, uh, we can be able to see the numbers, because we've got to be able to secure the bookings now to be able to see those numbers in festive season, meaning around September to December. Yeah, and you know, we're actually getting into quite a difficult period insofar as tourism is concerned in the southern hemisphere we're entering our winter season are you worried about some uh, businesses in the sector that simply won't make it through what is traditionally a dry spell given the slow uptake in the sector yeah definitely we are worried about that flu season um combined with um, um the pandemic but also with the threat of a third wave so some of the conversation, for example, we are starting with business in the tourism space to say, how do we caution um, in terms of the sector? What is it that we need to do? Because obviously we are expecting from where we are sitting, if in this, the numbers start rising because of flu season, because of winter, and because of the numbers coming up, uh, definitely what we've seen over time is that uh, NCCC is likely to impose some level of restrictions. And that will definitely put a strain on the tourism space. But also because normally with your winter season, though previously we've benefited because when South Africa had winter, other countries would have like, like summer. And you'd still have people coming into South Africa during this time uh, to be able to visit. Because even our winter, when it's winter, it's not really like really cold if you go to your north side and all those things. So they still are able to visit your Kruger National Park and your Limpopo area and Mpumala. But because of it being perceived that it would be winter and the possibility of a, 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 a third wave and possibility of mutation of the, virus, of the virus, there is caution from travelers and countries while they are observing how South Africa performs. And for us, it's a worrying point and it's something that when, when I spoke to some of um, the colleagues, it was to say, it's something that you feel like you're really chasing a moving target. So it's not easy, but I think the conversations we are having in the sector continues to assist. Jobs will continue to be lost until we can fully see the pre-2019 um, numbers, international numbers coming to at least around 10.2, which we were sitting on. We'll continue to see businesses being affected.
Right. Minister, of course, we, we know that demand in the sector is driven by two main contributing factors. It's travelers from abroad and travelers within this country as well. There had been criticism that the way things stand in the sector so far, it appears that local travelers have almost been an afterthought, especially when you look at things like pricing for some of uh, you know, the activities within the sector itself. How much attention are you giving to domestic travelers now? Because it appears this is you know, what you have to work with, at least in the foreseeable future. Um, Ayanna, we've seen quite a positive spin in terms of domestic tourism. You'd know that this week we issued a message that thanks South Africans for the support in the tourism, because currently the tourism sector is carried by the domestic market. So the domestic travelers have been able to get out of their houses and move. And we are still hoping that if during this month, a period of month, they will still continue to support the tourism sector. So it has been a pillar. And this is what is, I've been saying that when you look at global country, global uh, market, when you look at various countries, whether it's China and all that, their tourism market has been carried by domestic tourism. So we're starting to see that shift in South Africa. The second issue that you raised around pricing is that last year, you remember during a uh, tourism month, I started conversing about the issue of a, a possibility of a two-tier pricing system, a price for local market and a price for international market. Many of the sector people have responded in terms of putting those two tier prices. But what we are doing as a long term sustainable measure is that as part of the ministerial policy review, I have requested the policy review panel that is led by Dr. Nguluma to say, can they look at this area if it's something that we can do fully a policy on like other countries are doing, where you are actually enforcing that a sector does two areas of two tiers of pricing, pricing for local and pricing for international. So as a long-term solution, we are putting that in place. But short-term, many of the sector people have really adjusted the prices. I was in quite a number of areas. When I was in Kuga, uh, you'd remember that I did announce that some of the facilities there were already announcing Twitter system. When I was in France, that's what I picked up. Uh, you go to, uh, as well, the garden route as well, your Tsitsikama area, you are starting to find that. You go to Limpopo, you go to Mpumalanga. So most of those provinces have already started an establishment has responded because they do note that there is a need for them to really look at it. And even changing how they provide their packages in terms of being able to attract locally in understanding that a